all of you have a plan. Um, but before I do that, I really want to compliment Bridgeville Borough and South Fayette Township for one of the very finest Memorial Day parades I have ever seen in my lifetime. It was really a very great event in Bridgeville, and I want to thank you very much. The Historic Society has, of course, the publication monthly. And then next week on the 20th, it's going to be about time, American time system. Uh, this man spoke to us last fall on the decline of the steel industry in the United States. He was a phenomenal speaker. Very interesting. Then we give you a little bit of tidbit news, and one of you could win a $25 gift certificate to Berg's Pizza and Wings if you came down, visited with us, and put your name in the jug. At the end of this month, we'll be doing the drawing. It's a $25 gift certificate you have a chance to win. And these have all been donated. So it's, everything is a donation. And if you win, it's a donation also. Then on the next side of the white page, you'll find out uh, that on the day of the avenue, we will be starting to sell our raffle tickets. Uh, the company for whom I work gave us four seats and the, park, the parking pass August 3rd, a Thursday night, uh, but it's big pirate baseball. We urge you all to take a chance on that. Tomorrow night is the next study for all of you who went to Birchville High School. He did take us from 1903 to 1917. This month it's going to be 1917 to 1927. And in July, God knows how far he'll get. But it's interesting to anyone who ever went to Birchville High School. And the other thing I just want to mention before I call it a day for today, uh, I've been urging you to do something with PennDOT because with South Fayette developing the Mayview Road, Upper St. Clair's developing that area, someone really needs to be creating a massive double-decker, if you like, or do Germany, do eight side, eight, eight uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Eight, any rate, get them to go off, cross 519, get on to I-79, get on to the new highway to go to Earth if they don't want to come sit through Bridgeville. And that's, I just urge you to continue working on that. Thank you very much. Hope to see you tomorrow night. You from Bridgeville High. Thanks, Mary. Uh, Sandy Mahoney? Yes. Whoops. Do I have to go up there? You don't have to. <laughs> no. um, I live on Ramsey Avenue and I have for 32 years. I had a couple concerns. Um, there are two houses that have been abandoned on the street. Um, I believe it's 250 and 253. 250 has been vacant for uh, upwards of 10 years. And 253 is the one that had the flood oh. and it's sitting there um, and being uh, not taken care of. The grass is very high. The yellow tape is still there. Um, and I'm sure that there is just mold growing on the inside of that house that's unbelievable. Um, I didn't know if Bridgeville was able to do anything about that or if that is um, solicitor issue. Yeah. Well, I didn't know about 250. I didn't know that it was taken. Nor did I. Mm -hmm. More will definitely be taking a look at 250. Mm -hmm. We're aware of 253. Um, Can you give us a little bit of background on 250? How it's the one there? right beside City Coin. It's the White House right uh -huh. beside City Coin. And Mrs. Dunlap mm -hmm. lived there. I mean, it has been empty. I believe there were issues with kids in the basement a few years back. Um, but it's been sitting empty for a long time. And when the other one is <laughs> caught up in legal issues. And when the other one is we're all we're able to do. caught up in legal issues. All we're, we're all we're able to do at this point is to keep the four deductions of the party. And we lost the faith. 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 We lost the faith.
they had like, uh, we have issues with one charge, which is in our own, but we have issues with being charged the whole civil war. And God and they have the universe of the state. On it's for God and they have a civic space that stay on the world. We are trying to get off in the morning. We are trying to get off in the morning. We are trying to get off in the morning. We are trying to get off in the morning. That's the best we can do in the meantime. Okay. Okay. That's the best we can do in the meantime. Okay. For our supplies, for our health, for our health, for our health. Okay. That'd be good. The other issue I had was with the railroad in the back of our property. The, there's stagnant water back there that is green and smells and I'm worried with the summer coming with the mosquitoes and when they did the work on the railroad was it last year or two years ago they have left all of their unused debris laying there by the tracks um, the really long pieces of metal rail that they replaced are still laying there. That was um, an accident or something? No, I think they just did maintenance. It was general maintenance. Okay. I actually sent them a couple letters. In fact, I have pictures in my office um, of all of the debris that's laying there. And uh, as of this date, no response. Um, it's kind of hard. Is that the same local speller that you've been working with? Yeah. Okay, we'll walk the in. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you need residents to call on a weekly basis, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. Um, is there any hope of getting that sprayed down there? Does the railroad still do that? No. no. The, the railroad doesn't do any of that. I can send public works down there to spray that, but the railroad doesn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I had. Thank Thanks you. for we your help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a railroad's property. Yeah, right. And the mosquitoes seem like the bigger concern. They're not required to maintain drainage. Mm -hmm. They're not required to maintain drainage. They're not required to maintain drainage. Sure, yeah. That's a new issue. There, there are limits on what you can force the railroad to do for several years. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, Bob Fryer. Thank you. Uh, last week, last week, uh, I by chance attended a meeting at the uh, Churchers Valley uh, School. Uh, it was a pinned on public meeting that I happened to hear about. It, it was primarily about, I guess, some stuff that you guys know about. It. A developer is going to, I guess, move the Eaton Park and, and modify Peter's Place and try to develop that court. But uh, what I was concerned about was it's uh, another traffic point that's a half, about three quarters of a mile from Bridgeville. So I was always interested in making sure that uh, problems aren't created that would obstruct the vehicles coming into Bridgeville's business district. What I wanted to show you was this. <coughs> Bob, yes. This is not Bridgeville. This is Collier. Uh, yes, but it relates to Bridgeville. I, I know it relates to Bridgeville, but we have no jurisdiction over this. Well, uh, I don't know. What you, I don't. I'm, I just don't know which. What, what your work? Where you're going with this, and what you want well, us to well, do? Why, why don't you wait for that they explain it? It, and it? it relates directly to Bridgeville. Matter of fact, this is a copy of the, the drawing that was on the wall. When I saw it, I was. Uh, very concerned because I thought it was a very poor design. Just to give you a rundown, this area from uh, the Nadium Road to the Access Road Site 79 is about 900 feet, and you can sort of divide it into 300 and 300 and 300. And right now, as you know, there are 60 cars that sit up there, 230 lane roads. It takes the four lane road, two lanes, that's allegedly coming into Bridgeville. It's been that way for uh, I don't know how long. But anyway, what I noticed was, instead of having a whole lane of you know, the stacking lanes, cars here going down the native road, they've cut it in half. And instead of having stacking lanes here that would allow cars to turn left onto 79, there are none. And what concerned me most is in the middle section, 
they created a fifth lane where cars can go left and right of the, of the same area. To make a long story short, I went to PennDOT and told them that I really think this was a good idea. Did you go to Collier? Pardon me? Did you go to Collier and call them? Yes, I, told, I talked to one of them. Did you go to their meeting? Like no, no, I talked to the president of the commission. You should go to their meeting. Yeah, well, I, I will. But you know, this is important for us. So let me get to that point. Uh, I, I, I met with uh, one of the uh, Pendon engineers. Actually, I met with two of the Pendon engineers. I brought these things to their attention, and they seemed to be as surprised as I was. They they told me that this is, was a mistake. They even questioned whether this was their drawing. I guess they had a subcontractor create the, the, the concept for them on the spot. The senior uh, uh, engineer said to his assistant, "That's going to be changed. That can't. You can't have that problem there." And I asked him, "I said, what about uh, this area here? That you're wasting, uh, you know, the 30 or uh, 15 or 20 stacking spaces." He said the same thing. So they're going to put a left turn stacking lane in there again to accommodate uh, this movement. Okay. At any rate, when uh, when the I was relatively happy that they were making these changes. When that was over, I said, I, I have a couple questions for you about Bridgeville. I said, are we really going to get a seven-lane bridge? And he mentally, <coughs> imaginarily, counted up the seven lanes. He said, yes. I said, the seven lane is important because if it's not, eventually after St. Clair will have the upstream lane dedicated to themselves. And the bridge will end up with just one lane coming in at the time. So it's going to be seven lanes. The other thing I asked him was about the uh, widening of Washington Pike. It's going to propose another lane. Uh, of course, you know about that. And uh, he said that like, they kind of like also approves of that. I asked him about the left turn stacking lane on Washington Pike in front of Bethany Church for cars uh, going up Chartreuse Street because, as you know, one car stops there, ties up 30 cars behind it, which means people can't, we, we, we can't get cars in the stop at the long story short. He mentioned that <coughs> he deferred to his, uh, I guess, project manager, and the, the, uh, the second engineer said he has no the, the, the left turn stacking lane is not in the plan at this point. And I said, I, I think uh, it, it has to be. And I said, uh, for obvious reasons, that I would, would like to stand correctly uh, and we're concerned about traffic. Who's what? Uh, You're saying me. Well, I'm speaking for you guys. Well, oh, oh, please. Oh, you guys don't want a left turn no, stacking lane? No, you don't speak for us. Oh, well, that, well that's fine. I mean, I'll tell them what doesn't matter. I wasn't speaking for you. I was guessing what the opinion was. It would be from the gas public welfare. At any rate, he told me there was no uh, uh, left turn stacking lane schedule. And uh, I, he, he emphasized, uh, I told my thought that uh, Lori had mentioned at uh, two of the meetings that it was there. I think at the last meeting I asked Lori how they were going to create the left turn stacking lane. Was the, were they going to move the uh, East curb by the drugstore over 12 feet and then taper down to a zero at the uh, James Street across from the post office, which is what I recommended. You didn't, of course. And, uh, and she said she was going to. Can I interrupt you for a minute? Yes, you go right ahead. I talked to Todd Kravitz regarding the left turn. Yes. And what he said to me was they <coughs> want to do it, they want to be able to accommodate us to do it. Right now, they're looking at how it's going to impact the right aid. So it's not off the table. That's wonderful. <clears throat> it's not off the table. I talked to him on Thursday. That's but they're looking at how it's going to impact the adjoining business. Well, because we're going was, to be impacting it from Chartier Street and from Washington Avenue. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that because when so, I was when I was excuse me when I was talking to him, he had a clue about it. It wasn't in the plan. No one. I asked. I said. I'm sure. I thought that our original officials didn't notify them. We had we, talked about it in our meetings, have we not, Joe? Yes, we did. It was good. Did you send a letter to PennDOT requesting it? We had talked about it in our meetings, in, in, in our development. Right. Development there were, were more requests. 
Did you, did you ever formally request them other than yet two days ago? We didn't formally request anything that was in the plan. We submitted the plans and then when they went over them. We oh, went oh, over them and then you. when we had the plan um, as far as the area in front of Rite Aid, we talked about that being a left stack, left hand turn Turning stacking right. lane and they had said that they would like to do that, they were going to look at that. And we were hopeful right. that they were going to put it in the plan. Do it. Now it's not in the plan and he said they are going to try to accommodate us. That's, that's better. Fine. But I was going to say the other day, the chief engineer had no clue that uh, we even wanted that. Maybe well, he just I, didn't have a present mm -hmm. recollection when you had him at that time. The way you're working, we need to work. Stop, that's right, right. please. They go to these meetings, they have working meetings, they hash things out, they reach consensus, they don't need to write a letter because they know next time they come back, it'll be in there if there's no <coughs> consensus reached and they've said they're going to have it in the next plan or not, or it'll be down the road. And it's a work in progress, and those things that aren't in, she has the conversations like she just had in England. And it was with Todd Brown. Obviously on Joe's mind, and I'm sure actually, when focused on it, the fellow who at that time said he may not have recollected his entire team, I'm sure he probably was too. It might have been Dr. Taylor. Yep. We're trying, and we're trying to get a task force meeting together, Bob, because of the changes in leadership at PennDOT that have recently occurred, so that we can get an update on where they stand with the project. I mean, the project's in the process of being designed. It was just a matter of where is all the funding. The funding, there was a significant amount of support significant portion of the money already committed but the district executive had been taking it upon himself to help us find additional funds so since he's no longer there we've got to find out how they can help us get funding to, 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 to uh, close the gap yeah well I'm, I'm glad that you're progressing that far but I, I, from the information i got you can see why my conclusions were as they were the chief guy was unaware of it his, his, his assistant, the chief guy, Bill Travis. You called him. And Todd knew about it. I talked to him. Excuse me. I'm telling you what happened in my presence. He, he, well, obviously, his assistant. Obviously, you're getting one story from him, and she's getting a different story. Right. Well, then talk to him about it. We did. His assistant. I did talk to him about it. I called him and I asked him about the left turn lane, and his exact words to me were. We are going to try to accommodate you. Ain't better. We're going to see what impact it has on the bi adjoining business. Well, great. Do you think that was because I emphasized the importance of the I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, sure. We've been talking about it for two years. years. Yeah, yeah, really. 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 If I might. I'm sure it was, Bob. Yeah, I might. Yeah. If I might put something on the table. a rather large organization. No, we're not. We're talking about one person. We're not talking like... No, no, I understand. I know Todd Kravitz has been working on this project very closely, and, and, and the people at the PennDOT are paying a lot of attention and doing a very nice job of accommodating us. But I'd point out that our original plans that Mike Haberman did did not show that in terms of that angle. Okay? It, they just did not. And it might be beneficial if we, you know, forward something that indicates that original We'd like to see that yes, right. either you know, perhaps maybe even as far as having Mike Eberman update that concept plan. I don't know that that's necessary, Joe Sites. You know, I'm just good. trying to think of how to <coughs> better make sure that it's in the process. Excuse me, that's what Kravitz requested. He said he needs something from you guys okay. to request the left turn lane. Send You're letter. telling Send me that you have some letter. And he, and, and he did not say that to me. But we'll, we'll do it anyway. But he did not. He did not say that. That's fine. Thank you Bob, again. Uh, Michael Sutton. Good evening. Um, my name is Michael Sutton. We're residents 1423 Main Street, right here in Bridgeville. Uh, we're here on behalf of a few other residents on Main Street about the issues that's coming out of Fenner's uh, Farm Estates. Mm -hmm. As of residents, people using it as a thoroughfare. Speed limit, posted speed limit on Main Street is 25 mile an hour. We're having cars doing 40, 50, 60 mile an hour through there. There's been multiple times because I parked my company truck on the street in front of my house, as do other people. I've gotten out of my truck and almost been ran over by different vehicles coming out of Bedford Farm Estates. Uh, 
They do not slow down. They do not follow the post speed limit signs. Um, and the stop signs that was put in place going into Bedford Farms off of Main Street into Bedford Farm, they don't pay attention to. They blow right through it. And it's almost every vehicle is going into there. The normal vehicles that we see are the same residents that has been there before that road had opened. And they follow the posted speed limit signs because they live in that community. They understand that people walk up and down that street with their kids, with their pets. There's a lot of a lot of foot traffic on that road. And a lot of the people that's coming out of these states is not paying attention to that or don't care, to be honest. And it's becoming more of a safety issue than anything else because they're going to end up hitting somebody's pet, somebody's child, or somebody walking, especially in the evening. And it's gonna, they're going to end up killing somebody, and that's what it's going to take. You know what I mean? I'm hoping that's not what it takes to get some sort of issue taken care of. Another issue is all the construction vehicles that come out of Bedford Farm Estates. I'm okay with them building their houses. That's fine. I have no issue with that. But we're on the Upper St. Clair, Bridgeville kind of border right there. There's two other entryways to get into the estates. And they're using Main Street as an everyday access point. I understand that it's five minutes off their drive time. I get it. I do a lot of driving for work and I understand it. But when they're bringing 40, 50 ton vehicles through there across the road, us taxpayers are the ones who's having to pay to repair them roads that they're using, that they're not putting any taxes into. Um, another thing is those, the, the, the construction workers are also not following any of the, the posted speed limit signs. Um, there's two signs that say no construction vehicles shall exit from Bedford Farm Estates or as you come off of um, onto Sylvia, there's another sign there as well. There's two signs posted at either entrance, the Main Street, and they, <clears throat> excuse me, they follow neither of them. Um, I didn't, I wasn't, I, I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention because it's becoming more of a problematic issue that seems to, it's not going to cure itself, it's just going to keep getting worse. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention and I'm hoping that we can maybe figure something out to, uh, to deal with that issue, that'd be great. Thank you. Chief, do you have any Sure, I'd like to know what time of day you're saying. Myself personally, I've set up and watched the stop sign by coming to Maya's house or being in the main street. And I can tell you, sitting there 15, 20 minutes at a time, maybe two vehicles at the most I'm saying. That's morning and afternoon. So if you could, what seems to be the busy time of day out there? Because we're not, I'm not seeing a whole lot right. of traffic. On. Right. Uh, usually I'm going from 5 in the morning until about 6, 6.30 in the evening. Mm -hmm. And about 6, between, I'd say, 6.30, 7 o'clock to around 8 is a.m. It, it, yeah. Okay. yeah is whenever you know we're getting a lot of traffic through there to where they're just they're, they're just blowing right through the stop sign right. same with the speed uh it's usually towards so the evening it's either be tough too, right because, and i understand that because in order to get lines up there to find a place to sit where we can see where there aren't cars right. that's darn near impossible right i mean you guys do a great job at this you know what i mean and i'm not trying we're to try that's why play. We, that's why I want to know when you're, because I know I've sat up there and it's like a ghost town. Right. I've sat there well, time. whenever we bought the house two years ago, and the reason why we bought the house is because there was not very much traffic, it was very quiet, and now as soon as that, that road opened up, I mean, it's just, it's constant. It, it's non stop. The one thing we have is this sign right here is posted that you come up still. Correct. Okay. I brought this up over a year ago. This sign is not forceful because we do not have local delivery ordinance on Main Street. Okay. Local, the main delivery can go up and down Main Street if it wants to. I believe it's Councilman Kaluski where this sign would be put up and it's never removed if we don't have the ordinance on that street. Um, the other problem we have, I'm just going to tell it like it is. As far as Creek Road goes up above, where well, we do have the local delivery ordinance, we've issued several citations. And I don't believe that anybody that's requested a hearing has ever found guilty of those. Okay. Just not like that. Right. You know? Um, so we've enforced it. We wrote a lot of tickets. Unless people have pled guilty, the charges have been dismissed. Right. But the issue we have down here, this sign does not apply. It shouldn't be there. Okay. Um, 
as far as the sign out of Fetner's. Were these part of that initial agreement? Just with the workers? That the it was part of the agreement with, with Fetner states that the construction vehicle <clears throat> would not come up onto the street. Right. It's a long shot, I think, to enforce this utilizing the vehicle code. They can talk to the solicitor about that. Yeah. Those actually have to be enforced by having trying to get a percent clear. Those are development agreement obligations. Right. Like they impose on the development. And that's why I don't say basically that we're violating their developers and right. trying to get a percent clear by allowing their construction vehicles. Now, that's not a law, it's kind of a developer agreement. Right, right. Now, and, and just so you know, too, from day one, when these projects started up there and the mayor can verify, I hand delivered letters mm -hmm. to the builders up there. Contractors, the, the guys yeah. in charge of it. I mean, like, and we need to make steps to, to try to prevent this. Right. Just so you know. That. And you know, we have through Stone, like Stone uh, Concrete Company, that has front loader concrete trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming up the road with 15, 20 yards of cement fully rolling the bowl, and that's a sixty thousand pound truck. That's a we have no way. Of well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, and it, it's just. And they're, they're, I mean, the, the speed is, is, is more of the issue than anything else. Well, I was um, standing outside. I get home six six fifteen, and it starts to get busy after that time. I was standing outside talking to a neighbor, and there was a it was a big truck. I think it had a crane on the back. He came rolling out of Feather's Farms and down the street, and then uh, a van who was shortly thereafter him. And he actually stopped the van and kind of said, you know, do you mind slowing down when you're coming through here? Just because it's it's getting scary. Where are you at? Are you between Bedford and Silver Street? Or are you yes. At Silver yes. Street? Okay, so you're right between the exit there on Main Street where the new connector is and Silver Street. Correct. Right? Yes. Okay. We're, we're three four. houses three houses from Bedford's Farm. Bedford's Farm, one, two, four. Yeah, I'm sorry, four. The fourth house down on the left hand side. One kind of sits back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a traffic but um, from what I've read, enforcement is uh, not useful in slowing people down under a stop sign. So, is there any design considerations? Can you make the parking lot or do speed humps? Well, we're right to take it to work. It's out. But the issue we have here is to get lines on the road that are under the people parked in my spot we can sit. Monitor. It's very tough. It's very tough. That's why I'm wondering if there's any design. It's a more traffic than mine. Mine's driving. Maybe that ain't one. Or like those speed humps up on the school up near the park. Like, they're not a bump, but they're a big hump. You know what I mean? I believe they could probably shift light on that. <laughs> <laughs> those, those aren't cheap. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they're not. We did, we did a traffic study. Before the Bender Farms ever came, when we found out that Bender Farms was coming, there was a traffic study done on Cook School Road, on Main Street, on Ridge Road, and the only road that um, qualified for speed humps and it's slightly, just very barely qualified, was Ridge Road. Um, so that's why there are no speed humps on, on Main Street. Um, we try to do our due diligence to see if, what we can do. And I actually have a copy of the report if anybody wants to see it, but um, it includes all the roadways up there to try to see if there was anything that we could get, do to traffic calm. Because there's parking on both sides of the street, I do believe, and that's, a that's a traffic calming, what they consider to be traffic calming um, because of the parking there. But they're, they made no recommendations for anything else. Chief, is there a way that you can work with the residents on that street? It sounds like they'd be willing to help you make, well, that's, make the I, ability of putting those lines in. We, I would have to look at that to see where we can sit, to see the lines. And with the road being slow, you know what I mean? And with plus where cars park, that's what makes it difficult. Ideally, that'd be an ideal place for rate park. Yeah. Not using, you know, all these sides, <laughs> that would yeah. be ideal. That's a separate apartment for a separate day. I just want to know when the bulk of the traffic is. I personally haven't seen it up there. You know, anytime I've sat and watched that sign. I've walked the Main Street considerable amount of time. And typically, four to six is our, our ideal time for taking a walk in the afternoon. And that's, you know, there's a lot of cars zipping, zipping. I can't tell you how fast, 
but they're going pretty good clip down down Main Street. You know, that late afternoon. I do love how you guys will sit on Silva, Sylvia, watch the Bower Hill though. You guys do a really good job at that. <laughs> That's a problem, Mary. It is. Because I try to pull out of there to get to work and see how the same thing comes. Right. She, um, the letters that you sent out, I think it's. I think we should redate them and send them out again and deliver them to the construction site on construction vehicles next week sometime. Maybe. We have to find out who the project manager yeah, because, sure it's changed five times. Okay. That's why I'm saying we need to send them out here because they change and for some reason they don't seem to be able to read the sign sometimes. Um, I don't know that we need. So listen, I don't know that we need to take the next step, but not only was that part of their developer's agreement, but if I am correct, was it not also part of an agreement with Bridgewell regarding access? I believe that it was one of the clauses in that in the, oh, in the agreement with us. And a simple notification of what's going on and that we have issues. We have pictures of the trucks on Ridge. <clears throat> you know, and that's a very nice thing of cell phones. Uh, if you happen to snap a picture, it's a very nice thing. And I can, next, not the next meeting, I'm sure I can have a fork up. <laughs> very easy, you can, fork, you can forward them down, you know. Yeah. Um, very nice to see them. Because okay. it, it makes it very clear, and I have seen amazing, the, the, the truck with the, the, uh, the electrical cable on it was pretty much the biggest one coming up bridge. Can't figure out how the guy got up bridge to begin with. <laughs> he worked hard. He worked hard to get up there. Right. And when it comes to the other item, which is the GPS, tends to lead you there. Right. It doesn't vary between a small vehicle and a no. lower or anything else. Mm -hmm. I, talked to, I talked to the guy from that electrical company. He's like, we won't do it anymore, but that's the way the GPS told me to get right. there. Well, and the gentleman I spoke with, I can't remember the, the company's name, the gentleman I spoke with, I spoke with the, the, the site superintendent. Mm -hmm. He was from Florida, and he told me that he had no idea, that he's never been even up to see the site. So he had no idea that these guys were using roads that they wasn't supposed to this at the mm -hmm. third, and he assured me that it wouldn't happen again, but I mean, that's... It's one out of number, and that's why right. the chief will, I'm, I'm sure, get those letters Back up. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else, Michael? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Eric Newhouse. You anything? <clears throat> I'm just here to answer questions when you get to the that's Newberry right, agenda item. No problem. Thank you. Uh, Anthony Mastrand. Hey, everybody, Anthony Mastrand. Um, I've got another traffic problem I'm yes, you do. Um, I live on the corner of Murray and Shady and I really like to visit the areas down here by Railroad Street, uh, except I've almost been hit a dozen times crossing Washington Pike. Uh, right here? Right here. Either direction, on either side of the street. I've been close enough to the cars that have decided to whiz through uh, the intersection to touch them um, on a number of occasions. My wife has almost been hit. Her mother has almost been hit. I had to wait three light cycles with my baby in a stroller for someone to, for the traffic to stop taking the turn while I had the walk sign mm -hmm. on a number of occasions. So I don't know, it's certainly not going to be solved in enforcement, I don't think either. That intersection is just too weird, too wide. People aren't looking down to where you have to stand, press the button, and look at the sign. There's something going on there design wise, I think, that is causing these folks to just not not notice uh, an adult person with a baby. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I, I was waving and yelling at people, trying to get them to, to see that I was there trying to cross. I've experienced um, the exact same thing. Yeah, exactly and I, I make exactly. choices now about not coming down here mm -hmm. and not visiting these businesses because of this intersection. And as easy as it is to go on the station, you just, you know, sometimes you just get in your car and you head up to Presto, you know? <laughs> so it's it's a real, it's not just a problem for the residents, I think it's a problem for anyone who wants to walk through the that's a huge intersection to be taken. And it's really the crossing from Bower Hill Roadside across Bower Hill Road. That's the, that's the deadly one. Oh, that I, I'm not familiar with that yeah, one. Well, you're saying that. It's, it's, it's this intersection in both directions on either side. That's where I've had my worst trouble. 
See, I've, I've experienced it directly with people making a left turn from Washington down Bower Hill, and I'm trying to cross the road, and they don't even know that oh, I'm Oh, so that's my walking direction, not like, the turning direction. If I'm crossing Washington Pike in either direction, on either side of the road. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all those yeah. left turns. Yeah, all those, they're, they're really tough. And um, you know, I'm almost thinking that it might be better to change where the pedestrian crossing is, so that the pedestrian crossing is down further into the into the intersection, down further away from the intersection. Because I don't think we're going to solve it. You know, from an enforcement standpoint, I don't think we're going to be able to solve it. You know, and do you think, uh, Joe, do you think this is something that Mike Haberman should take a look at? I think you probably look at, but I'm not sure what. Mike Haberman is the traffic engineer for Gateway. Engineer. I'm not sure what you're going to change on crosswalks unless it's put some, something into the uh, time related to everything comes, to everything comes to a dead stop and then, so, and then everybody has full that, walking about it. But that I can, can really make them, I, I hear what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. I'm thinking they're already not looking for people. Oh, no, you're saying red lights and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be a scramble walk, right. red lights and all that. That would be a really major disruption to the traffic flow. Yeah, because we, we all know we already wait too long at that intersection in the car. Right? So <laughs> I was thinking maybe to take a look at moving the pedestrian crossings away from the intersection itself, so that you know your pedestrian cross. Because your pedestrian crossing here, if you cross here at the road building, that's safe. There's no, you're not allowed to do it. Jaywalk. Yeah, so there's no pedestrian crossing. I know that. I've never. None of us. None of none of us here, I'm sure, have ever oh, crossed the street there. We all go up and take our lives into our hands <laughs> crossing Bower Hill Road at the. At, at its, at its junction with Washington Avenue, where people are making the left and don't even see you when you're waving your hands. You have um, the sprint coming right across here too. Though. Yeah, well, the, you're, that's what I'm saying. Maybe you this is the better. Yeah, <laughs> maybe this is the better spot. I don't know. In any event, I, don't I, think, I think it's a design problem. Somebody's got to have something interesting there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll take a look at it. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, one other thing, I just... Um, oh, no, we're done. I, just, <laughs> um, I noticed um, Hickman was being repainted. Is it Hickman? Yes. 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 I saw some beautiful brick under there. Are yes. we interested in... Uh, are, is there any... Can we get the brick roads back if we're tearing the road up and we see nice brick? Or is it just too yeah. much of a mess? It's too expensive. No, it's too it's expensive. Too expensive. Yeah. It's way too expensive. It's, but we're not it's, that it's, it's too expensive in what time period? It's because worse. how many times are we going to repay? You, how long does brick last versus? A hundred years. <laughs> those, those up in our area we, we, we were put in the 1920s. Yeah. And the, the concrete street I live on that I help pay for yeah. has been there since 1957. So what is more expensive? The monthly, weekly, yearly. And I think we could. I think there's information out there showing that brick streets, because they're a little bit wobblier, you drive slow around them, people are safe. No, but that, how do you that's a that? missed hour. There you go. The nice thing about a brick street is you can tell how fast the cars are coming to you. By the vibration. You know the speed before you even see. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's a regular meeting. Uh, minutes. The motion to part of the comments regarding the minutes of May 8, 2017. Regular meeting as submitted. Second. Bruce and Burt. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number one, 2016 CCTV project. A motion to the borough council regarding the remittal of the current estimate number one. 2016 CCTV project to advance plumbing and draining in the amount of $14,245.37 for work completed to date. Uh, estimate has been reviewed and approved by Engineer Sykes. So moved. Bruce? I'll second. And Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, estimate number one, current estimate number one, 2017 CCTV project. Uh, motion of the Borough of Council regarding the remittal of current estimate number one of 2017 CCTV project to advance plumbing and draining in the amount of $3,747.45 for work completed today. Uh, the estimate <coughs> the So moved. Mark Cherry and Second. Who's that? Mr. Chair. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? 
motion carries. Uh, current has been number two, uh, 2016 CCTV project. Uh, motion to borrow comps regarding renewal of current estimate number two, 2016 CCTV project to advance plumbing and draining in the amount of $7,664.60 for work completed to date. At the time of completion of the agenda, we're going to make the public um, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Bruce? Second. And Bert, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, motion to borough comments regarding the removal of current estimate number two, 2017 CCTV project to advance, advance plumbing and draining the amount of $17,168.51 for work completed to date. Bruce? Second. And Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Cargill Incorporated in Bridgeville Borough, Second Amendment to Articles of Agreement. A motion of the Borough Comp regarding the Second Amendment to the Articles of Agreement between Cargill Incorporated, our salt supplier in the Bridgeville Borough, to enable the Bridgeville Borough to purchase the minimum 80% requirement of road salt by December 31st, 2017, in lieu of the current contract, which states the salt must be purchased by June 30th, 2017. Uh, salt cost will remain the same at $69.29 per ton. The borough is still obligated to purchase 262.3 tons. So moved. Bruce? Second. And Joe, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Newberry Plan of Lots 14th Revision Subdivision and Consolidation Plan. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding the Newberry Plan of Lots 14th Revision Subdivision and cons uh, Consolidation Plan. The uh, plan has been submitted by Newberry Development Association as prepared by the Sacramento Environmental Consultants Incorporated dated February 23rd, 2017. Purpose of this subdivision and uh, consolidation plan is for the establishment of a roadway easement that varies from 40 feet to 50 feet in width parallel to Chartier Street located within the original borough boundaries. This roadway will present, pr provide access to the northern portion of the property referred to as Partial G in the area of the area of the easement within, located within the borough is 0.122 acres. No new lots are proposed within this new plan. The subdivision has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. The planning commission recommends uh, recommended the approval to be contingent on the original borough and South Bay Township entering into agreement regarding shared services and or taxation of the parcel located within the original borough. So moved. I'll second, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question on the okay, guys. It, it, did we enter into agreement or did you talk to anybody in regards to the agreement? Yeah, let me answer that. That's not actually germane or necessary in the context of this. This is actually simply a three subdivision plan, which would include this. The road is actually private and taxation appropriation on a commercial parcel like this occurs by operation of law. So there's no agreement necessary. This is not actually even a plan development plan in terms of. They'll actually have to come back with the second land development plan for the actual construction of the road. Because usually when they construct it, then it's turned over to the community. The community. Not this. This will be a private commercial developmental road, correct? Correct. So it's never going to be a public street. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they'll take care of that. That's yes. right. And there's okay. never, there's not any, any public services that need to be picked up. And, and as I mentioned, the, the prorogation of land value is based on the land. It's rather interesting. The planning commission last time the group was here gave the same recommendation, and the council and the solicitor came to the same conclusion that no agreement was really necessary. I uh, would like to make sure of something. We do believe that mutual aid chief covers any request for police services at, a, at anything that would be built in South, in South, in Bridgeville, but in, if we got a call that there's a robbery in process at the, at the building that they build on this property, 
We're talking about the property. The property in Newberry that is across Chartier's Creek from yes. Bridgeville. Yes. That would require Bridgeville to leave Bridgeville, go through South Fayette, go into Newberry, and get to that little spit of land. Mm -hmm. I am correct that our mutual aid would allow South Fayette to assist us in responding. Right? Yeah, that's That's right. Yeah. Um, but while we've got Eric, would you mind? Would you mind if you gave us some insight into how everything else is going in there? Since he's taken an hour and sat here through this, because if he's got a moment, I'd love to hear it. I don't mind answering any questions if there are any. I did bring a plan. Let's get through this real quick. Okay. Yes. Through this okay. yeah. There's a motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those okay. opposed? Motion carried. Um, all right, go ahead. Ask. You got three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, can you tell us, first of all, on the traffic work that you're doing in South Fayette Township um, that you've been working on moving forward with the the highway improvements that are on your side of the equation? Um, mm -hmm. How's Newberry coming along with those? Uh, we're making good progress. We uh, awarded a contract actually last fall. Right. To a company called A. Felino Construction. Um, they're highly regarded by PennDOT. They do a lot of work with PennDOT. Um, the only thing that's holding us up at this point is, I would call it administrative, uh, minor administrative items with PennDOT. Uh, specifically, turns out there's a water main right in front of what was the BP gas station and the uh -huh. Med Express property which we're having a difficult time getting PA American Water Company and PennDOT to agree as to how easements apply to that, whether that's a private utility, a public utility. PennDOT will not permit us to do any of our work until that's resolved, since I'm not a direct party to that, uh -huh. that dilemma. So, so that's the I, easement you're waiting for? That, that's, that, there, there's that item, and then there's a second uh, traffic signal maintenance item which really is a discussion between South Fayette Township and PennDOT, yeah. where that's one where PennDOT has basically taken a position where they're asking South Fayette to do some maintenance on a signal concurrently with some improvements that we're building mm -hmm. into the same signal system, and PennDOT's saying, we'll get it all done at once. But it's a maintenance item that's a pre-existing problem that's not related to our work directly. Mm -hmm. um, so PennDOT has also requested that that be resolved and that that design dilemma be resolved before we proceed with work. Uh, so we're actively working on both of those items because we would like to proceed imminently, um, but neither one is directly within our control, no. uh, which is often the case when you're dealing with uh, projects that relate to PennDOT's roads. Let me, so. let me bring up one more that's not directly within your control, because you might be able to help with when we've spoken about it, um, the sidewalk in front of Midas. Um, I'm hopeful, I'm not going to ask you if you can commit, that would be great, but a lot of our virtual residents walk across the bridge at Chartier Street to go to Aldi's and to go to that shopping center, maybe even to go to Franklin Bank. <laughs> um, and, but you can see that there's, there's a traffic area there, um, and there is no sidewalk in front of Midas, and you know, there's a plan for doing that when the bridge gets put in. Yeah. But in the intervening year or two, because it's projected to be what, 2019 for the bridge? Am I right? That's what I was told. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I was told not earlier than that. That's <laughs> different than a commitment <laughs> that it would <laughs> occur by that point in time. Okay. Yeah, um, if you or the con or Felino could see fit to put some asphalt in place of the mud, it would be appreciated. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Make that happen. <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming. Oh, yes. Yeah, so Thank you, you for taking quick action. Thank you. No problem. And our bill list motion to the borough council regarding the June 2015 bill. There we go. Second. In person. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Payroll. Motion for a of the payrolls of June 16, 23, 30, and July 7, 2017. So, and Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. 
monthly reports, motion to accept and pay any commissions due the May 2017 real estate <coughs> tax collector report. I'll move. Joe Hucci. Second. And Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the April 2017 financial report. I'll move. Joe Gucci. Second. And Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the May 2017 police report. So move without a comment. Yes. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. I don't often do this or, or read you know, the, the police report. And I, I think it's important for the public to understand it's a busy community. And these guys are really busy. They have 270 calls for service in May. That's about nine a day. Uh, they, they wrote 95 traffic citations, 58 of them were for speeding, seven for stop signs. So they're, they're addressing the issues that you were coming with. And I, and I feel confident that they're getting the job done. We'll take your your uh, yeah. We'll, we'll take your comments and suggestions, and, and uh, the chief will work um, you know with us up here, and we'll, we'll address them. Appreciate. It. Thanks, Bill. Uh, motion to accept the May 2017 zoning report. So moved. Second. Bill and uh, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Administration. No <coughs> Uh, fine. Uh, now that we're uh, six months through the year, uh, we're going to have a financial uh, finance committee meeting to uh, sometime in the near future to uh, just see how things are going and, and uh, what things need to be addressed the second half of the year. Uh, happy to report that the finance and the uh, budgets are looking very good so far, especially with the mild winter. And uh, excited to see that the 2016 uh, delinquent tax uh, list decreased over 35% this uh, last month. So uh, that's nice to see. Uh, there's still a nice size amount that we'd like to, to see removed, but, but it's nice to see that number go down significantly over the last month. That's all I have to report. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Parks and Rec. Report. Uh, report. <coughs> With works. Yes. Um, everybody like the sidewalk at the early person? Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Very good. Our, that was all part of public works. Uh, with Lori and Joe being helpful in a lot of it was done. Uh, uh, public works uh, demolished all the uh, sidewalks and everything down there. And some of the cost was picked up by Washington and Lake Erie Railroad. And we picked up some of it. Become way under what the estimates were. So, yeah. Our public works guys have been hard at work now. Uh, they're starting to pay this week. For, for, yeah. So that's all I have. All right, thank you very much. Public safety. Well, just one comment, Mike. Again, I'd like to commend the, uh, the chief and his department for using social media for real time information to the public. You know, we had a busy day Friday mm -hmm. uh, just on Chartier Street. And, then getting that information out is very helpful uh, for people who avoid those areas. So, commend to them too. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, echoing Mary's comments, one of the distinct pleasures of this position is the Memorial Day Parade. And it was a very, very nice one. Not only uh, at Melrose, but it was also at St. Barbara's. Bethany and St. Agatha's or Holy Child Cemeteries. <coughs> would, uh, would like to take a moment, Joe Sites. Um, yes. <coughs> the water company did work on Hickman Street and on New York, and in the past we have coordinated with them to repave the entire street rather than just the half of the street. Um, from our previous conversations, you've uh, you thought you looked at the, at least uh, Pigman Street. Can you give me an understanding as to why? And I think I already, you've already answered it, but I'd like an answer to the public record as to why on Hickman Street we did not pay the other half. Well, the, the other the, the condition of Hickman Street was such that there was, was no need to pay the other half of Hickman Street. It was less than ten years old, so we didn't feel there was a need to uh, normally service it. Okay. 
And what do you think the dividing line is for that? Less than 10 years? It's probably less than 10 years, yeah. Okay. So that's the reason if anyone was wondering why it looks like half of it's done and half of it was not done, is because half of it is still good. Um, I hope to see everyone at Flag Day um, this Wednesday. Uh, it's a very nice moment to take and pause. Uh, it's up at the uh, War Memorial. And, uh, we'll be able to do a very nice event. Hopefully the rain will go away. We're talking about seven. Uh, seven o'clock. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, uh, we'll come back to the chief. Uh, Tom? I have not been in my uh, Engineer Slice. Thank you, President. Uh, some updates here. We went over the uh, payments for the CCTV work. Uh, advanced plumbing should be done here within the next two weeks. Uh, Solar construction mobilized here on May 29th. Did some repairs on Hickman Street and Missouri Street and uh, pulled out for a couple of days. We should be back midweek to keep progressing with that. Uh, the backflow preventers on Baldwin Street were currently working on the design and specifications for this backflow preventers. Neander uh, gave us a list of interesting property owners and uh, once we get the design and specifications completed, we'll put it out for a bit. Uh, the pavement maintenance program, uh, Casper Coliseum completed the trench repaving where the water lines were installed last week on June 7th. And uh, we've been in communication with Youngblood and we'll be scheduling a pre-construction meeting in the next week to get the project started. That's for Shady, Cook, Sylvia, Main, and Spruce Street. Joe? Yes? Have, do we have anything from the water company, the gas company, on Shady saying that they don't want to fix the water lines under Shady? No. Have we, we, we reached out to them and they said there's nothing. Okay. So. I, I don't believe it's unreasonable ask for a positive confirmation that they don't want to redo the water line under Shady. Considering that they're redid the water lines in so many places. Yes. I know, you just, I really empathize because I know how frustrating it is. Let's please reach out one last time sure. to make sure. Anything else? 2015 pavement maintenance with uh, on Bower Hill Road. I have a meeting with T.A. Robinson this week to walk it and mark out the locations again that are to be repaired. I met with People's Gas. They are in agreement to pay for the, the servicing of the one lane where they put the gas line. So it'll be some cost savings to us with that. Um, nothing back from the DCNR and the McLaughlin Around Park Phase 2. Washington and James development. The manager and I are going to meet with the architect on the 14th to review their latest design. Hopefully, we'll see something there that's uh, will be quite different. Uh, the Chartier Street, Washington Avenue, Chartier Creek Bridge intersection. Since the de district executive Dan Cessna has left PennDOT, working on scheduling a task force meeting with all involved parties. Uh, Mr. Cessna is very supportive of the project and was assisted in, in assisting and looking for additional funds. To close the gap to complete the project. The project is currently in a design phase, which qualifies it as a project, but all funding needs to be secured before any work can begin. So, we're, uh, since there's been a division of his duties between three people there at the district office, uh, Mike Haber and I talked about this. I thought it was very prudent to get a task force meeting together to keep this moving so we don't, nobody loses sight of it. So, okay, that's all I have. Thanks. Real quick, just for the benefit of the yeah. resident on Greenwood, yeah. what's the story with the area? We will be working on getting those. Uh, do we need additional bids? Or do we need I want to, let me talk about the contract. Let me see what his price was again. Uh, we, can yeah. we can get that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, done? Yes, I'm done. Okay. 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 Um, Fire Chief Petrullio. Thank you, Mr. President. You guys have my report from last month, what we uh, did the calls. Just a couple things. We did have one of the calls we had last month was a major gas leak in one of the buildings up on Washington Avenue, which was found to be in one of the businesses in the basement. So that was one of the things we wanted to do. 
And um, the other thing is with community day, I'm sorry, day on the avenue. Both, both of them are saying in my book, but um, I talked with the county, they're bringing to, for as long as it doesn't get called off, they're bringing in the big command post they have that opens up to show that we do have a major incident that comes out to assist, as you can see with the LA County has. You know, they are back to call when we need it, all this stuff being used somewhere else. So it gets used a lot. Yeah. So it's something neat to see what it's all in there from checking out the weather and how they can handle a major injury out of this unit. So that will be here for a few hours on Saturday. Mr. Commissioner? Yes. So that's it. Let's hope to see you every Saturday. Sounds good, thanks. The community day. They only have it. Yeah. Yeah, too. Saturday. Just, just not at something that's not as pleasant. <laughs> Please, Chief, do you, do you have anything? I'll, I'll be real quick. Okay. Um, obviously, the bridge will down the avenue this Saturday. We'll have our booth this year. Um, we have over 100 bicycle helmets that were donated to us from the Cole's Hardhead program for UPMC. So we have over 100 bicycle helmets that go out to kids that need them. Uh -huh. That's any kid under the age of 12 needs to wear a bicycle helmet, along with other slap bracelets and items like that. Also, um, we passed out the flyers, letting the residents know that the street will close down at 6 a.m. and reopen by 9 p.m. on Saturday. And there is a separate event taking place at Chartier's Park on Sunday the 18th. Um, it's called Bash, Bass for Basham, and it's a, it's a fishing tournament that's being sponsored by a local sportsman's club uh, in honor of Scott Basham, who was a hands officer who was killed in line of duty last year. That will take place at Chartier's Park on Sunday, and I will after um, after I put a notice out on our Facebook page about Bridgeville Down the Avenue, I'll put the flyer out about the basket fashion event. Cool. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> uh, Dan Lane from Southbridge uh, Parking Authority. Mike, do you have anything? Another one of my favorite subjects. Can I go down and give you a little history lesson about us? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we've had several gentlemen who have given our lives up to inform us. Kurt's one of them, Curtis Copeland, Henry Barnaby, uh, Luke Coney. We've had a lot of great people to get us to this point. And one, one thing they beat in our head one day and be responsible. And pay your bills. And the parking authority has done this. Over the years, we've done the rebuilding of parking lots. We try to make them conducive to what Lori and the public works is doing with lights and, and shrubbery and whatever. We spend a little more money and, and some of our lots. We're working with Joe right now to, to look at lot two, which is going to be a substantial uh, investment. Uh, we know that we have two more lots not too far behind. So as responsible people, we looked at your request for uh, the parking and none, none of the numbers add up. Uh, we just, uh, we're going to come up short and then we've become, to this point in time, we've never been a, a, asked for a penny to work or a, we paid all of our bills out. So we were, and Joe can tell you, we spent some serious money on Lot 2. When we built Lot 2, it was, it was at half a million dollars. So now we're renovating it, it's going to be 170 some million. It's all right. 170,000. Uh, so I hate to say it, and Pat's going to shoot me, but I just don't know how we can do it. No, I Mike, I, I understand. I mean, that's not what I, you know. Yeah, and let me start. Um, you know, to, for the for you to be here tonight, I won't, we're not looking for. We're just asking, you know, what's going on, park authority, okay. like regular like update and <coughs> stuff like that. We can have a we can talk, right. you know, away from here if you like. That's our, our, goal, our goal is in the spring of eighteen to do lot two. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working at lot three. And probably five, two years after that. Okay, great. That's 
that's our goal, our goal is to make sure you don't hear anything that causes you know, Like a referee. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Except for the pens. Yeah. We're talking about now. Exactly. But, uh, we just, uh, we're very proud of what we do. We've got a lot of great people. Sure. We've got a lot of great people. I wish you had Bert back. Pat, we could talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We have a lot of that. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of good help. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm not going to shoot it. Okay. I very much appreciate so, the parking like authority. I'm going to move over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you are having some difficulty trying to make the numbers add up. As you said, you try and make it so that we don't counsel and the borough doesn't get complaints. Obviously, you know that there are complaints, and they're significant, and they're meaningful. Okay? There are problems, and you are aware of them, and you are trying your best as a parking authority and as individuals to address them. I know that. Point out to you that if you back away from the problem about 10 feet, I think you'll find that the numbers not only add up, but they add up much better than the numbers you're working with now. I know you don't, but you don't have anything on paper, right? And yeah, and I've given you, I've given you some some items to take a look at. I would urge you. You know, a former councilwoman sent me down to Brownsville, Pennsylvania to take a look at it. And I remember driving through Brownsville, Pennsylvania, and I got the message very clearly. Buildings that were hollowed out, but the parking lots still stood. But by the, by the time I got down there, they weren't collecting anything because there weren't any businesses left. Yeah, because it had all gone away. Uh, by the way, that wasn't entirely due to their parking problem, but it wasn't helped by it either. So please keep an open, keep an eye, open mind to creative, innovative solutions. Changing the dynamic of what of what you're doing by not not asking. Uh, train, you know, short-term individuals, our customers, to hassle with the difficulties of the kiosk could truly improve the business environment in our community. That's a very important, you know, objective, and you can do it without hurting the revenue stream that the parking authority relies on. You can also improve the situation for the residents who are on Chess Street and not not all you know close to but not in the business in the, in the mixed use district. Those people are burdened by having long-term parkers that simply walk an extra 40 or 50 feet. And again that's where council comes in. We have council needs to work with the parking authority to set up a system that prevents people from Use, utilizing all of the neighborhood parking spaces to park all day while they go to work. But none of that can work with the system that we've relied on for almost 60 years. Since the parking authority for this reform, it's pretty much done the same things. The world has changed around us. Let's adjust a little bit. So thank you. I'll tell you one thing. Some of the suggestions I've got over the last two months came to fruition. You have changed the, your bridge to keep there to hang on the street because they have a parking authority hanging in the garden. I, I don't think so. I know there's a fear that you think, and it's palpable, that the authority fears that if it makes some changes, yeah. Obviously, yet there are three rules of parking that are immutable. One, everybody's got to park someplace. Drive, you got to park your car someplace. 
Two, there's no such thing, well, the parking has to be paid for. You can't have parking lots without having somebody paying to maintain them, shovel them, fix them. Have to do it. And if you, if you don't have ample parking, it has to, oh, I'm sorry, the third one is everyone wants to park in front of the door they want to walk into. That's the third one. Everyone wants to park in front of the door they walk into. If you follow those three immutable rules, you can create a structure that allocates the burden of paying for parking, rationing that parking amongst the competing you know, users, and truly improves the business environment by not bothering. How many, how many transactions are there? Eighty-seven. How many? Eighty-seven hundred last month. Eighty-seven hundred transactions last month. You remember how many? The average is what? One or two hours? Uh, one point four, fourteen minutes. So that's less than forty-five minutes. Right, less than forty-five minutes. You could get rid of what? At least three quarters of the transactions if you didn't try and collect for the first hour or two. Three quarters of the people not having to worry about anything. Uh, this is not a place to I know. We so, need a lot of help. We need officers. We need. I mean, it's just. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk on this. Yes, yeah, so we're not talking about that vibe. This is a parking lot. It's, it's a moment for me to say I'm not going to shoot you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. For uh, Amanda. I provide my report to anyone who has questions. And I just wanted to remind everyone that we have a virtual day in the afternoon from 11 to 7 on Saturday, so I think everybody can come on and do the best they do. Thank you very much. Uh, old business. Um, I got something real quick for old business. Um, last month we had the Ball uh, Retreat and Comprehensive Plan um, from Carolyn. And either I kind of want to discuss it, whether or not we want to move forward or, or not. The first phase of that is how much? Um, $4,596. We currently have that in the budget. Uh, we have $2,500 in the budget. Um, in that line item. In that line item. In that line item. And you're saving us all. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to see us get going to some point. I have a problem with that. If it needs to be in the form of motion, we can find the money and like to get that. Do we ever see it only getting moved forward, though? It's going to require a study. And now's the time to start because you got some, you got a lot of vacant lots down there because of the lack of data buildings were tore down and stuff like that. So if you're going to start, now would be the time to start. Before you do any more planning or anything down there, and FEMA's already told us they're not going to interact or respond to anything, any flooding that's there anymore. So, outside of going into the first floor. So, as we move forward here, you have to come up with some, some plan to know what we're going to do. To help the people down there. We might not, I might not see it in my lifetime, but at least it would be a start. You can buy a new one. Thanks. So, Mike, you need that in the form of motion? Yes. So, so moved. All right. There's a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, John. Uh, new business. I have a couple things. Uh, the Southwest Community Chamber of Commerce uh, asked me to announce that they're having their annual fundraiser. Uh, this year they're doing a three year prepaid lease for that beautiful looking 2017 Chevy Silverado out there. Uh, or $18,000 in cash. Uh, if anyone would like a ticket, I have plenty of them, so please feel free to contact me and I'd be happy to get you one. Where's the draw? 
I'm sorry? When is the draw? Uh, July 18th, I think. They always have a nice little picnic and everything uh, outside their office. Uh, the Bridgeville Athletic Association asked me to report that they will be having the annual movie uh, at dusk on the day of the avenue. Uh, it'll be at dusk at night, not on the avenue, but at Churchill Park. So uh, if you'd like to uh, come down, uh, we'll be uh, putting the movie up in right field on the small field on a nice screen that the VA has purchased. And uh, it'll be a kid-friendly movie, of course. And that'll be what dusk is around, what, 9, nine o'clock or so. Any other things? Motion to adjourn. So we Second. Well, the